Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I have already been having a truly, truly excellent conversation with J.D. Kindred. Is J.D. or J.D.? J.D.? Yep. Okay. J.D. is, in addition to being a delightful conversationalist, she's a Canadian-born author and an entrepreneur, world traveler, and intuition coach. J.D.'s book, Intuitive Business Connections, is all about growing a business from zero to six figures in an intuitive way. She's passionate about helping other entrepreneurs and business professionals live more intuitively, authentically, and have a balanced, joyful life. JD, I can already tell you practice what you preach because I'm having an authentically joyful experience already. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Oh, that means so much to me. Thank you for having me. Well, let's let's jump in again <laughs> at the very beginning, or at least at the beginning of your life as a coach. I like to ask this in kind of different ways, more or less as a two-parter. How did you discover or realize that you were a coach, wanted to be a coach, maybe someone that kind of told you that what you, who you were already or how you were behaving in the world had something very, very much along the lines of being a coach. Like however you came about to that, that realization, that discovery that you're a coach and you wanted to be a coach in your life and in your business. And how did you go from that moment, that time of realization and discovery to the coaching business that you have today? Yeah, you know, I uh, always consider myself a natural born teacher. So as a little girl, I would play teacher. And when I grew up, uh, I started actually a language school where I've been coaching French entrepreneurs and business professionals to have more confidence speaking English. And so after a decade in business, uh, I finally treated myself to a business coach to really level up my company. And he was the one who said, you know, JD, you would really be an amazing coach. And he really planted that seed in my mind. And so that was the initial start. So this is my new path. You know, I still am the owner of, of my company that I founded in 2011. But now my dream is to work with English speakers, English entrepreneurs and business owners now and help them have really, as you say, you know, more, more balance and time and freedom while earning more money. Uh, you know, I used to work, you know, seven days a week and 12 hour days and really imbalanced. And I had to learn how to, you know, delegate and manage my time. And now, you know, as you saw me and maybe you could hear, you know, the tropical birds around, I'm, I'm traveling and working from Costa Rica. So I have created that time and freedom for others that they can really create their dream life with just some minor adjustments, really. It, it can be a lot easier than, than entrepreneurs think. So at that, that, I love the way it's, it could be easier than you think. And that's like, mm -hmm. that's one of those things that I've like, I've tripped up over myself so many times throughout my life and have watched other people trip over as well. It's like, we don't even really let ourselves think about what's mm -hmm. possible. We, uh, we just kind of let ourselves get locked in. Sometimes we have to, you know, you get into the grind. As you mentioned, you kind of found yourself working those, you know, seven days a week, you know, 10, 12, 14 hour days sometimes. Because that's, that's, that's the life of an entrepreneur as you're sort of told it's supposed to be. Or mm. some, something like that. You get to some idea about that. And sometimes that is the case. And there is a great deal of work in entrepreneurship. But, mm -hmm. and, I should say, and, mm -hmm. there's just, there are other ways to think about it. And I just, I love, I love that that's an area of focus for you. I think it's so important just to like, just to encourage and to prompt people to think about what their life can look like living it the way they want to live it and having the business they want to have. Exactly. And we all have different values, you know, for me, my value, even when I started my original like language school 11 years ago was freedom and time and freedom. And so even now I could, you know, take on teaching again and double my income tomorrow. And I choose not to, I'd rather be here volunteering, serving, working, you know, coaching, working with different clients, you know, just creating, creating more dreams and creating, you know, a new future for myself. It's funny when you think about the bottom line or that concept of the bottom line, it's often about like, that's in terms of like money or a particular version of success. It's like, what about the bottom line for joy? What about the mm. bottom line for your life's happiness? Mm -hmm. And like you said, balance. It's like, there are, there's, there's different math to be done here. And I just love that. Like, and it's not just about chasing as much as possible, whether it's money or success or some kind of status. Sometimes it's just a matter of deciding, how, what you want, you're not, not how full you want your life to be, but what you want your life to be full with. And then pursuing that and putting your effort and energies into that. And it's, 
I know it seems so silly to say it out loud. It almost sounds corny, but it is it is so immensely rewarding. And I mean, re- I mean, you throw a word like joy around and people maybe start to roll their eyes a little bit, but truly life can mm. be filled with this kind of joy. And that comes from balance. It comes from helping people. You can ha- still have success. You have your business. You have your, your entrepreneurship. You're contributing, having impact. You and your family are are cared for. You can you can again. It sounds kind of cheesy, but yes, you can have it all. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I think that joy, a joyful life, is really found through slowing down, and that's kind of my main message that I share with entrepreneurs and and business professionals. I always, you know, when I was teaching them uh, English, I was never giving grammar homework. My homework was rest, go take a walk in nature. Hey, read that book. We would talk about the same books we like, like slow down. And the moment, you know, I, I see people who are so burnt out and overworked and overwhelmed. And the, and even for me, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. When I feel that I stop, I slow down, I reconnect, I go walk in nature, I meditate, I do yoga. And now, and then that joy just naturally, you know, bubbles up again. And so I always have to remind myself of that and really create that life on a daily basis. It's not just like one vacation a year that will fix everything. It's like this mental, this nurturing and this self-care on a daily on a daily basis. And, and, you know, I talk a lot about that in my book of, you know, we have so much wisdom within us if we stop and listen to our intuition but if our lives are so busy and we are consumed with i think your mic's cutting out a little bit there jd (laughs) oh if we're just so consumed with you know these activities and you know tv or cell phone or activities how can we really connect to our our passions and joy and inner inner knowing it's really People talk a lot about list, like listening to your gut and intuition and instinct, and they don't really talk a lot like you're talking about how to go about doing that, working at it, mm-hmm. creating an environment in which you can actually hear you into your intuition, which may well be speaking to you right now, but your life is so noisy. There's so much chaos and sound and just cacophony. I've always liked that word cacophony that just not, it drowns out, makes it almost unhearable. The fact that your intuition is whispering to you, speaking to you in a normal tone of voice like, hey, hey. There's something else. There's there's another way to go about this. And it's really a matter of committing, I feel like, to creating the kind of environment in your life, the kind of life period that allows you to hear your intuition and to maybe be in conversation with it and to follow it down certain paths that, you know, there may be joy at the end of those paths. There may be joy on those paths, I should say, because those paths don't end. They are, they're con- a continuing journey. And again, I know it sounds a little bit corny, but I get really excited and kind of passionate about it myself when I think about it, how much my own life's changed when since I more significantly committed to just not going, you know, all out all the time and making sure that I'm not letting too much noise enter my life and drown out the, you know, the the intuitive voice in me. That's so far when I've chosen to not just like listen to it for like a week or two a year, but actually commit to that conversation. Just learned so much about how to find the joy in my own life, you know? And I feel like that's a, such an important lesson that quite frankly, a coach like you is perfectly suited to help people to find, you know, to, to develop. I just, I, I'm basically like praising you. I love, I love your commitment to what you're, what you do. And I love the the way you call yourself an intuition coach. I feel like there's not, there's not enough, not enough straight talk about the fact that your intuition needs some help and some guidance as well as just your career or your profession. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to really be that example. You know, I, Mm. I write again about this in my book. I had no idea what to do, how to start a company. And all I, all I could trust was my intuition and the next steps, the best way to, the best way to, you know, take action in my personal and professional life. It's not just finding joy, but it's also about how to best manage your company, how to best deal with a a client or an employee, or, you know, there's intuition is used in every sphere of our life, but 
I perceive it, I always call it the whisper, hearing a whisper. So you're saying kind of, you know, normal voice, sure, people can hear intuition, you know, loud and clear as well, but often it's quite subtle. So yeah, you have to slow down. And sometimes just even through a coaching session, that's the only chance that my clients may have in that week to actually stop and slow down and gain the answers that they have because you know they have all the answers. I don't have answers for them. We're all our own masters. So it's almost allowing this space to happen uh, for intuition to come through. I, I, lo I love that. Uh, that 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 holding of space. I, I love that so much. It's mm -hmm. something that that coaches and, and good coaching provides so so generously. And I want to spend a little bit of time at least. I could I could I could stay on this conceptual level with you all day. You're so much fun to talk to. But I want to talk a little bit about your your actual your coaching business today. And I kind of like usually two part this one. We've already talked a lot about who you coach, but talk a little bit about how you coach people. Like for, and I, I kind of frame this as obviously one to one is a key part of any coaching practice. But some people do like masterminds of various sizes or they're you know, their keynote speeches here and there, or they do team coaching in certain like, you know, small to medium sized or even larger businesses. Obviously you've written a book, which is a way that you've reached a lot of people. So basically, yeah, who do you focus on coaching these days in your business and primarily how do you coach them? Yes. And so again, one day, if I ever speak with you in the future, this may change, but in this <laughs> moment of time, I offer a three month unlimited one to one online. And I almost call it like a laser coaching, even laser coaching package. It is a bit longer. So I generally want 20 to 30 minute sessions. I'm working again with these busy executive entrepreneurs, business professionals, and sometimes just these check ins, these, you know, quick check ins can really help give them the answers that they need or for them to give themselves the answers they need. So mm -hmm. that's my primarily, that's my, you know, main package. In the future, I'm really right now in the process of dreaming and imagining hosting more wellness retreats for entrepreneurs to really have the time to tap back into their intuition to solve, you know, work problems or even team meetings or, you know, I don't know how, exactly how that's going to look, but I also want to include, you know, all, you know, professionals really to these wellness retreats to reconnect to themselves. So to have these retreats include daily meditation, yoga, healthy, high vibe uh, meals, you know, connecting back to nature. And then at the same time, offering individualized coaching, and that could be life coaching too. I appreciate the, I greatly appreciate the, the, the holistic approach and whole is in like, I mean, entire, <laughs> where it's just like, Hey, we're not just caring for your mind or your thoughts when we're caring for your emotions, we're caring for your whole existence. And that includes, yeah. you know, some meditation, some care for the yeah. body, some good <laughs> food. You know, it's, it's funny yeah. how like the simplest things, like I've, I've, as I've paid more attention to myself in my life, I'll notice when I have like, like just a, an not unhealthy meal, maybe I just have too much. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not, not only do I feel it in my body, it's like my thoughts don't feel the same. I'm like, I'm th thinking in different ways. And I'm like, why am I, why am I bummed out? Or why am I, why am I this? Why am I that? And I just kind of think about my day and I'm like, oh, I ate too much. I ate too much. <laughs> or mm -hmm. I ate too salty, like little stuff like that, where you just like, you just think about what you're putting in to your body, what you're putting into your mind. Again, I'm kind of talking about the noise that we're allowing, the things we're allowing to enter into our lives and just thinking about that and caring for it intentionally so that we can, you know, build the kind of room that we, that we need to be able to hear things like our intuition, that whisper. I, once again, I've, I've gone down a little rabbit hole with it and I get all passionate thinking about it as I've, as I've gone down my own journey over the past, you know, I was going to say two years, 10 years, 20 years, whole life since I've been realizing that there was, there was work to be done and, and new things to learn. It's so exciting. And I, I love that you're moving in that direction of just having again a very like a wellness retreat for people who struggle doing that for themselves you know you talk mm -hmm. about like taking a week here or a week there and it's more like it's it's less about it's more like coping right where you're just kind of like you get to it and you're just so relieved it's just like Bleh. and then you're all of a sudden before you know it you're back into the grind or whatever it is that you that you spend all your time in and all of a sudden before you know it you've picked all your old burdens back up again and you're right back where you were and I like I like putting some intention into it and actually constructing like a retreat that really addresses all of this in a really like, intentional and focused way. That's really cool, I think. Yeah, you know, very well said, Kevin. It's really intentional living, you know, and what 
what can happen to your life if you, every moment you're conscious of what you put in your mind and your body and in your soul and what you know it, it's it changes the really the trajectory of your life it really really does man okay so i want to i have two questions before we leave one is a little bit practical i want to make sure that people can find out i mean obviously whenever this wellness retreat thing comes around i want people to know where to where to, where to find out more about that but where can people find out more about you and your coaching, who you are and what you do? And also as sort of like a part two to that first question, where can where can people connect with you? Do you have any way that you like to meet people for the first time? Any preferred social media where you like to like connect with people in DM? So yeah, where can people find out more about you and or where can people connect with you? Lovely. So, you know, the best way is to find me uh, on my website at intuitivebusinessconnections.com. And from there, you can read uh, more about me. You can watch my YouTube uh, introductions about the different coaching I offer. I have an Amazon link to my book. Uh, I'm going to have a new uh, page for my future retreats. And also from there, you can reserve the three month three month coaching package uh, directly online with me. And you know, I like, you know, wow, the best way email is great. Yeah. Connecting to me on YouTube. I'm really trying to grow that if people like that, because this is me just sharing. It's like literally me just channeling like messages I've, I've learned about entrepreneurship over a decade and like how that's helped me. And if I, if more people like that, then it'll encourage me to produce more. It just kind of started a couple <laughs> months ago. And, and, and so I would love to continue offering, you know, free videos. So yeah, I would say, you know, YouTube and, and my email would be great, but then I'm on LinkedIn as well, you know, under my name and there's many ways <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy to, many, I'm many, easy to find. I'm easy to find <laughs> many, many, many paths, many, many, yeah. many paths on our same journey. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And also I really like real quick on YouTube. I really love, I've, I've come to think of it as letting people meet you before you've had a chance to meet, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Where it's like, I like letting people hear me and see me and connect with some aspect of me that's going to be important should we ever begin a relationship and just being out there and being present. I don't know. I feel like it's a, it's, it's just a way to invite people in before you even know that they're knocking at the door or before they've even knocked. And it's like, I, I just, I like it. I like it quite a bit. It feels very, very powerful to me. Nice. Yeah. I, I <laughs> love doing it. Like I just, yeah, sometimes I have no idea what I'm going to say and it's not maybe the best YouTube strategy, but it's about, <laughs> It's like, I, I have, it's not a good strategy, but it's about like, yeah, I just want to share this, this, you know, in, empowering message. And if someone mm -hmm. needs to hear it, like even better. And so I go with just a very heart opened space when I, when I do these recordings and if someone connects, like awesome, that's even better. Hey, there's, there's a, there's an aspect of social media that's going that direction. Less, less well-produced media, mm. like the Instagram kind of thing, or like the YouTube stuff and more, what's that one platform be real is something that's kind of on the rise where it's a little more, it's deliberately structured to be more impromptu and more, more not vulnerable, but I guess more accessible, more immediate, less, less, I guess, produced is, is, is the thing I'm going for. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of neat the way that social media ebbs and flows that way. And so I'm, mm. I, I, I doubly love what you're doing since that's your approach. Cause that's something that <laughs> I respond very strongly to myself. So thank you for that. And yeah, so check out your YouTube, YouTube channel. Now, before I let you go, and I know we've been, I feel like we've been talking for, for hours and I could talk for the rest of the day with you, but I am going to let you go here in a minute. But before I do, I want to ask you, do you have any sort of message you want to leave the audience with anything just i don't know it's i know that certain podcasts have one podcast listen to the tim ferris show always had this one question he liked to ask a lot of his guests it's like what would you put on a billboard if you could put it on like this billboard like in the middle of the most populous area or whatever it's basically like a cute way of getting around to like what's the message you want to leave people with if you could leave them with any single message and so yeah i want to open that up to you and see if you have any 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 words to share for the audience if you want them to take with them when they go Oh, I love that. Yeah, I have so many words for this. I'll, I'll try and keep it short for you. You know, I just, I want people to understand that we are more intuitive than we give ourselves credit for. You know, really just by slowing down, we have this immense wisdom within us and that can really best guide us in our personal and professional life. One quote I absolutely love from Howard Thurman. He says, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. And uh, that's really my ultimate goal is helping people achieve that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, I, was, I was actually rendered speechless there for a second. That That is perfect. I, I don't want to even add anything to it. That's, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like, yes. Yeah, 
something about the way you delivered that. I don't, I don't know. It's, it just struck me. So yeah, it's not, not, not a great thing for a podcast host to be struck, struck <laughs> silent, but I appreciate it. That's a perfect, that's a perfect message. And I'm going to take that with me and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sit with that for the rest of my day and probably the rest of my week. But, uh, thank you. And I'm totally going to bother you on LinkedIn or YouTube and get you to come back on and to end in another episode because it's been so much fun chatting with you. I, I just, I, I want to do, do it again. So I'm going to be a little greedy and I'm going to have you back on probably like in January of 2023. So. <laughs> well, I really hope you do. I would love that. Thank you so much again for your time and for this opportunity, Kevin. Absolutely. And to the audience out there, I mean, I hope, I hope that message went straight home. Find out more about JD. She's Clearly, you've gotten this far. You know she's awesome. You know she has a lot to say. She has a lot to <laughs> offer. Connect, find out more. And we will talk to you again here on this podcast feed very soon.